It's You Call That Radio. It's Sunday. And, uh, and on a Sunday, I like to think back to a place that sells pizza. They used to have a deal on a Sunday for pizza. They're no longer with us. They shut down. But what made me think is, like, can you get, like, can I get, like, a, a frozen pizza? Like, an, e- an extra cheese frozen pizza? And what's the first thing you do when extra cheese pizza? As you put cheese on it, obviously extra cheese. So if you've got a four cheese pizza, you make it a five cheese pizza. So I started Googling a five cheese pizza. And I was like, well, if you've got a five cheese pizza, you would get a six cheese pizza. So I Googled a six cheese pizza. And I was like, well, if you had a six cheese pizza, you would add a seventh cheese, wouldn't, wouldn't you? I'm just, it's an open question. And I kept going, I kept going. And apparently you get 12 cheese pizzas. You get 13 cheese pizzas. You get 14 cheese pizzas. And it goes right all the way up to 15 cheese pizzas. Now, if you got a 15 cheese pizza and it arrived, what would you do? You'd sprinkle cheese. You'd get a, a 16 cheese pizza. But there has never been a 16 cheese pizza in the history of the world, according to Google. Look it up. It just stops at 15 cheese pizza. So if you want to make a bit, you know, in China, they've got two words for crisis. One means bad things in a crisis. Crisis, bad things, it loosely translates as, and the other one is crisis, but it means opportunity. So if you're one of these people that wants to make an opportunity and a crisis, then what you need to do is bring out the 16 cheese pizza, start doing home deliveries, respecting social distancing legislation, of course, but do the 16 cheese pizza and then leave it up to the person. If they've got a bit of cheddar in the house, maybe they can make it a 17 cheese pizza. Or maybe they can't. Just thought I'd start with a bit of advice. It's Sunday. It's hot outside. I kind of miss beer gardens. This is You Call That Radio. Tonight we've got a double a double bill. We've got Leila Josephine in the house. And then we've got the Mickey Nines documentary. The magic behind the mask. Both are happening the same night on the same show. This is You Call That Radio. Thanks for tuning in. You call that radio. Fucking fucking radio. You have to tell the people that we hear you. One God will not allow. You call that radio. I hope you want to see it. You call that radio. You call that you want to see it, that's kind of part of the fun. Powered by our patrons. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. Yes. Powered by our patrons. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. So thank you to all the patrons who are supporting us at patreon.com forward slash you call that radio. I think we're on 121. That's good. Tonight we have, no, that's out of date. Tonight we've got Leila Josephine. Tomorrow we have Sound Thief. And then we've got Sarah and Barry with their hang. I don't know what it is, but it's called Your Awe A Vision. Instead of Eurovision, it's Your Awe A Vision. And that's on after the Sound Thief interview with people from all around the world competing to win. A competition and you, the audience, can vote for it. I really don't know much else apart from Sarah and Barry are good crack and Anti Barry is hosting it. So check it out. It should be good crack. And on Tuesday, we've got former Sick Note frontman and groundbreaking artist, singer, uh, drawer, for lack of a better word, and uh, beatmaker, Doghouse. On Wednesday, we've got the Call That Radio Poetry Slam. And then on Thursday, we've got Kitty Got Claws, which will be 
also the day that we're celebrating 30 days or 31 days of going live, because we're live here every single day at 7 o'clock. And we wouldn't be able to do it without the patrons. So thank you, patrons, and thank you, more famous, for your help in the background. Uh, later on, we've got the Mickey Nines documentary, but it's an absolute pleasure to introduce, before all of that, our first guest of the evening. Make some noise for Leila Josephine. How's it going? Hi. Yeah, good. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm yeah. feeling a bit sunburned. I feel a bit... I just thought because I made uh, noise for Leila Josephine and then there was just nothing that felt... I'm sure people were making noise back home. But anyway, sorry, sorry for interrupting you. You're sunburnt. I feel... I don't feel like fully sunburned, but I was in the sun all day. So it might be a bit... Are you one of these ga- are you one of these garden people? Yeah, I've got a garden. Yeah. Fuck. Ayrshire. Ayrshire. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Ayrshire's not got a lot, but it has got gardens. Yeah. And beaches. And beaches. Shout outs to beaches. It seems like a distant memory. Well, today's probably the first <laughs> day that one of my You gave me one of my second ever gigs in Ayrshire. It was my second ever gig. Wow. You remember that? No. It was the alternative burns night. Oh right, okay. F- yes, friction burns. So we used to do the, yes. the air leg. Was that at the the was that the firehouse next to the train station or was it the one with the wee tunnel bit outside? It was like you went and yeah, I think it was the tunnel one and it's like yeah. kind of hidden off the main street kind of. Yeah, that was good fun. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Uh yeah. Oh well, well there you go. Like, Losers that just like regulars that were just drinking in the pub and they were like, What the fuck is all this about? <laughs> what, and, and nobody knew. I think that was the same night. We had uh Rag and Bone Man doing really loud punk blues mixed with probably yeah. people like yourself doing a bit of poetry. Homesick Aldo, who was a blast of the past, we we went on someone tagged me last night saying, What happened to Homesick Aldo? And I didn't know. So we went on a uh, well, well, I asked Facebook and we f- we found him. We found him sick. Aldi. He's sa- safe and well. The Muthy had the mouth, a mouth organ and he would do... The Muthy for methyl, he had long hair, he would, he would play a foot drum sometimes. Maybe he wasn't there that day. Maybe he was. I mean, it was a long time. It was nearly seven years, I think. How's Ayrshire? Yeah, it's good. I love it here. You picked a Why good time. You picked a good yeah. time, though. Like, yeah, I've been, I've been here for like two years now. Um, I definitely do miss, like, cause I usually work in Glasgow. So I, I do miss my wee jaunts to Glasgow, but it's definitely easier to, like, get about here and not be worried about bumping into loads of people. And there's a little bit more of a community vibe since it all kicked off in my village as well. Um, and being by the sea helps as well. That sounds amazing. That does sound amazing. Because there's really, all the advantages to living in the city are just kind of disappearing right now. Yeah. That, I started off by, there was a place that I used to get a good pizza from. That's gone now. Can't get that. That's what, gone. What was the pizza place? Well, it's just a, it's a, it's a place that used to do four cheese. But then one day I noticed that yeah. they had a five cheese. And the more and more I investigated it, it just seems like... Someone is always ahead of the game and they come up with the 16, 16 cheese, though it stops. And there's definitely more than 16 cheeses out there. And I just found it quite, it just seems weird that it would just stop. And I even tried 18 cheese in case someone skipped 16 cheese, but nah, no evidence. What? No evidence at Did all. Did you try like 50 cheeses? Did what? Did you try like 50 cheeses? Like pizza yeah. 50 cheeses? No, I, I didn't. I mean, I ran out. To, to be honest, I kind of didn't try every single number. It just seems like the, the trail went dry at 16 and I picked a couple of random numbers, like 20 and I think 24, mm. and there was no evidence. I just thought the trail had run dry. But you're right, there could be a 50 cheese pizza. Let us know in the comments if there's any 50 cheese pizzas out there and especially if they're uh, available for delivery. Uh, we've got Alan Morrison says 16 cheese pizza, yes. <laughs> Soapy says you hate hates cheese. <laughs> no, it says I hate chess. All right, well, wait, then. it's correct. So cheese, even the devil's work. 
Twitch is working loud and clear. Um, if oh, yeah, so polite. As and how are you in general? Because we don't, we didn't really get stuff. Eh, uh, I'm okay. I think um, I'm better. I go through phases. Like sometimes I'm stressed and quite anxious, and then other times I'm totally all right. And I think it kind of depends on how much I've read in the news or stuff like that. But um, my boyfriend works in the hospital, so when he's at home, I'm usually quite a bit more chill. But when I'm spending all my days alone, I start to get a wee bit manic. But he's uh, he's been home this weekend, so that's been good. Yeah, so is it the yeah, so he's what he what he's working in the front line then. Yeah, he's he's working in a geriatrics COVID ward. So he's um but they've got PPE and stuff now, which is good. Um but yeah, I think it's kind of a bit different when you're in geriatrics because it's like that it's mostly like palliative care rather than mm. like ICU where it'd be trying to like save people all the time, do you know what I mean? Kind yeah, and then sure so pa- palliative care, just for people who don't know, because it's it was it's a, something that I've just became familiar with because yeah. uh, I have had family members who have there, there's been forms going around do not resuscitate forms, and so basically just saying giving you good drugs to see you out in style is that kind of what it is. I mean, I'm no expert on it at all, but like the people that he would be in his ward would be like very old like extremely old people and people that have been sick for a very long time um not necessarily with covid so um that's the kind of people he would be he would be dealing with um you know people that would be coming out of care homes and stuff like that i mean it doesn't doesn't make it any better at all um but um i think being resuscitated is quite a horrible thing anyway i don't think it's not like what you see in like hobby city and stuff like that so you know it's you know the chances of coming back from it are quite low. I, I mean, I'm not an expert at all, um, and I don't think it's ideal, and I don't think it's particularly a nice place to work or a nice thing to do. But well, it's good that he's got PPE. It's mad that that's even a statement, but he's got PPE now. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. So he's, he's one of the lucky yeah. ones. I know. I, I think in Scotland it's been handled slightly better by the sounds of it than in England. But could do better. I would suggest always could do better. Always could yeah. do better. Uh, Mike Smalls tuned in. He says, such a great show. I don't know if you're talking about the show in general or just already. Is this just already a great show? <laughs> That's not bad going. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Amelia Baylor wants to know what your favourite pizza is. Oh, this is like such a sensitive subject for me, actually, because... I've actually had to come off the pizza. <laughs> I had to go. I had to go pizza clean because uh, I recently found out like I'm allergic to cheese and uh, wheat, so I can't have anything. So I haven't had a pizza in eight weeks, which it used to be like a weekly thing for me. So I'm feeling quite vulnerable about the no pizza thing, um, but I miss it a lot. Oh, is it, so is it, when you see an allergic, how bad is the reaction to it? Basically, you just. Uh, like it's like pretty pretty graphic <laughs> all right okay <laughs> um, it's like it is fine but like I, i'm hoping that i'll have like a pizza like a few times a year kind of thing um but i used to have i my favorite used to be like i used to have love a uh, blue cheese on pizza so like that would be like fancy one pisano used to do one of those um but i did like a veggie pizza a lot 100 percent. that's it r.i.p R.I.P. The Pizza Times. We've yeah. got... Uh, do you not resuscitate? I'm not set in stone. You can have a personalised resus plan in place. Shouts to Tam. I don't know anything. Really. Yeah, we maybe started the wrong foot with the medical questions. We I don't... I maybe just call Jack <laughs> through. Be like, yeah, we yeah, start yeah, starting. Yeah. So, Leila, I'll maybe put it on the screen. Uh, we've got Dr. Dr. Leila Josephine in the house for any of your uh, <laughs> virus-related questions. Yeah. We've got uh, Raymond Dito says Harley's and Furies down the lane in there. It wasn't it wasn't called Harley's or Furies. I know I know Harley's and Furies. Uh because w- Harley's once told us we weren't allowed to play over 75 70 decibels or something. And That's I didn't really know. Low, is it? 
it was very, very low. I didn't, I don't, I still don't know much about decibels, but I know that whatever number they gave us was too long for a rock band. And then, <laughs> then the other band that came on, one of them might be watching this right now. We could maybe get to the bottom of this. They turned up with their own PA system. They all worked at the bar though, and they turned up with their own PA system, and they were way up. If we were at 70, they were at 90, and that was fine. That was fine, wasn't it, T? Never got to the bottom of that. But we sounded shit compared to them. Partly because we were, shite, we were a shite band at that time, but also because they were louder. What uh, band yeah, was it? It was, uh, yeah, it was Gyro Babies. Gyro Babies. Still, never, uh, never been a shite band. Oh, yeah. No, we've been shite, and then we got good, and then we got shite again. It's just a kind of sort of, just depends what the day you catches. Uh, we I feel got, like I'll, that as a person. I feel yeah, like sometimes what? I'm a good person, sometimes I'm a shite person. What about your poetry? Do you think do you do you ever feel do you have days where you just like this didn't work? Yeah, all the time, like literally all the time. I constantly I'm like I'm gonna quit. This is shit. I'm rubbish at this. Well, all you did. Time. Well, you did quit, kinda, didn't you? Because you you quit doing it for a while because you focused on your theatre show, uh, Daddy mm -hmm. Drag, which was at the Fringe and other places. Yeah, I've quit. Like I've I've never like gone like completely cold turkey like I have with the pizza with poetry but I have kind of like come in and out it like um I, when I went and traveled for two years um when in like 2014 and then I also um yeah when I was making daddy drag my show daddy drag didn't have any poetry in it so I was kind of focusing on that but still doing the odd gig here and there but not really writing as much anymore and it's, I mean, the, with poetry, as, some, as someone who's has played many bad poetry gigs myself, I do feel like it's a, it's a worse feeling having a bad poetry oh. gig than a, than a band gig because with a band gig, it's, it's all quite confusing. And, you know, nobody's really sure at the end of the gig whose fault it is. Sometimes you are. I mean, sometimes it's you're like, oh, that was my fault or that was the drummer's fault. <laughs> But you you can always kind of sort of shift the blame a bit about no one's really sure what's going on. But with a bad poetry gig, you're just like I, it's just I, you. You're the only person, unless you're that kind of cunt that blames the audience. And you're oh like, no, I've, I've done going. that. I've done that. I've done that. Yeah, I blamed the audience for uh, not getting it. But it's, <laughs> I'm aware that that's you know it's not cool. Uh, what was the word you would describe it? A cunt? Uh, Did you I say cunt? Yeah, type of I, cunt? <laughs> to be fair, I've done it before as well, where you're like, oh yeah, there's something wrong with the audience. But I think it's like a two-way street, so that you'll feel off the audience how they're feeling, and they'll feel off you. So it's kind of like an exchange. So if you are, like, I know myself, like, see if I'm in, like, a bad mood or not, like, or, like, anxious or feeling a bit, like, like, rushed or whatever, the audience will then be able to read that. Because if you feel uncomfortable on stage, the audience can read that. So like half the job of being a good poet is making sure like your head is in a good place to then make them think that you are enjoying yourself. <laughs> but <in laughs> poetry, usually you are, but sometimes you're not. But also poetry is also about not enjoying yourself and talking about difficult subjects and reliving yeah. some of the worst times in your life. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sometimes it, like it is, but... I kind of, I kind of enjoy, like, I, I don't like, I, I don't like, like, see if I was like with a mate and they were talking about a relative that died or whatever, like, I would still, like, quite enjoy that chat, like, I'm not scared of kind of those kind of topics, like, I find them quite interesting and I'm always up for, like, talking about them, so even though sometimes things can be pretty bleak, I think that, like, talking about them is still, like, quite enjoyable for me. I think when you start re-traumatising yourself, which I've seen happen to poets on stage when they're they're delving somewhere that they've maybe not dealt with, I think that that's quite, it can be, like, quite dangerous sometimes. I don't know if you've ever felt that for yourself or if you've ever seen anyone else do it, yeah. but it's almost like they don't realise how much they're disclosing and how much they're kind of um, exploiting themselves in a way, and I think I've I've definitely done that in the past for sure. Do you regret that? Because uh, no, actually, think... well, the, obviously the one that comes to uh, we don't want to talk about the thing that that we always talk about, but when you did, a no, poem... you can talk about it. It's fine. Okay, 
Okay, no, but the poem, so Layla did a poem that attracted a lot of bad attention on YouTube comments and stuff like that. But I don't, yeah, I mean, I you, came, but you came out stronger at the other end, so I, mean, I wouldn't imagine that you'd regret that. That was actually a positive experience in the end, I would imagine. Yeah, I think that there is like a naivety of when you first start doing poetry or anything creative that's in a public space that you can be quite naive in terms of like what you, you're just like, I'm just going to put out whatever. Whereas like when you're a bit older and you have like different responsibilities and you like, I don't know, you you kind of think a little bit more about how to like protect yourself from all those things like not being like super open to the point of actually like destroying your life for two weeks or whatever um but that poem is still the poem that you know people get a lot of like like I still get messages from women all over the world and stuff so even though I've moved really far away from that poem it's still like doing its good so like I don't regret it but I definitely think I'll I've learned now when I'm writing to just be like really checking in with myself whether or not I want to share it and what the what my responsibility is to the story so like when I was making daddy drag for example like it's very much it's so personal about my family and you know all this kind of stuff I had to really like unpick why I was doing it and like making sure I wasn't doing it like for selfish reasons and my mum had to be like a huge part of the process like you saw the show so you know that it was all like mum was like speaking throughout it and stuff so we had to have quite a lot of discussions about that um but I definitely think that you know, as when you you first start you want to just like like you, you've got a bit of more of a fight in you you're like I'm just gonna say whatever I want to say and you know I don't care if it you know hurts anyone or hurts me but like when you when you have been doing it a few years you realize that that's just not sustainable and after a while it's just knackering and I suppose also one of those things as well is that when you're when, when you're first writing, especially in those days, you were writing just for yourself, and then mm. when you were performing these poems, you're you're only playing to you know a small crowd, and most of those people, with the exception of that pub in there, mostly it's, it's a poetry bubble who are, are probably going to kind of agree with a lot of the, the things you had to say. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But I remember that night, like I used to have a poem, and it was like a list of all. The, it was like a, it was a list about me, kind of like being like, "Fuck this, fuck that." And it was all like, it was all kind of like feminist, being a woman, being a rubbish feminist kind of chat. And then at one of the lines that night, it was my, my only my second gig ever done in deep, and then I come to do this one in air with you, and. Uh, it was like, and fuck me for, I can't remember what I was saying, but it was like pretty much talking about me, myself being a hypocrite. And I was like, fuck me. And then there's one guy at the back who's like, I will fuck your head. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Do you remember that? Nah. It was like like an old geezer at the bar and I was just like, no, he won't. <laughs> like, offended that he didn't want to listen to my feminist rant. Yeah, so that is what maybe the... The different, a different tailoring your content to a different audience. Hundred percent. That's another thing you learn after a while. Is like what what you use for different content co context. But see, when you've only got four poems, you don't really have much of a options. <laughs> you just have to do what you're getting. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. They're probably all written at the same time from the same angle as well. So <laughs> the same, yeah. the same kind of naive like self-pity so you, you've only got that those ones to do yeah like i've i've uh, never all, all my spoken word stuff every time i always write some deep dark interesting stuff and then i go to a poetry night and then i just go comedy usually because i just i've just find the other people that are exposing themselves and i think they do a very good job of it some of them some of them are, are doing a great job talking about what they've been through and i, I appreciate they do a good job and some people are really bad at it, and I don't appreciate that. But I just think it gets a bit serious sometimes, and yeah, I agree. and I just think, and I think it's like my job. It's my job here. It's my job to go in here, and I can feel the room just all a bit. It seems a bit sad, and I know you might enjoy, you know, the the chat about death and stuff like that. But you can tell that some people have maybe never been at a poetry night before, and they're just in the room going. You can just feel it like, oh no, this something needs to pick up, and then that's why I turn up like and you know, pretend I'm a food day and all that, and it just to to lighten the mood. And as a result, I mean my poetry career has suffered 
because I don't seem to take it seriously. But it's not that I don't take it seriously. I love it. I just, I just would rather we change the the subject every so often. I think that that's another thing that I've definitely learned is like within my sets, I'll always try and have like a mix of stuff. Like I always try and start with something funny and end with something funny, and then like all the stuff in between can you know you can go a bit darker. Um, but I think that that's something else that you learn as well. And if you go up and do like five really dark poems, you'll you, the audience will be gone by the third. So I think that that's another kind of craft thing that I've learned for sure. And it's people like watching people like you that have helped me learn how to do that. Well, thank make you. Make funny stuff. Well, do you know what? Why do have you got any funny stuff? Because we're going to maybe get some poems uh, from you. Sorry. Can we start that way? We we'll start with a funny one, just in case people. I don't, don't know, know, know if it's funny, but it's a positive one. Well, that's fine. We need positivity. Yeah. And I think that's a good way um, to start that. Is start positive, then take them into a dark place and then maybe end in a positive way. I like, I like the idea of that as a, as a general yeah. show. Not just... I don't think any of mine are too negative today. They're pr- I, I feel like I feel like a lot, everything is quite negative at the moment, so maybe if I just keep it quite upbeat, yeah. then that will help. That's Yeah, go for um, it. And it's also it's quite good to see yeah. sunshine coming through both of our screens today. Do you know we've got? I mean, I've got mine's it's actually a light, but it looks like sunshine. So <laughs> it really does look like sunshine, and your blue eyes are just, just yeah. It's uh, it's the cutting is open, but if I'm being honest, well, let's just show, I'll just show you the difference between my sunlight, yeah. So, this is the real sunlight, can't quite compete you, with the air, sir. So, have you got a sunbathing spot? Like in the flat, are you able to like? Sit? Are you enjoy able to sit at the window anywhere? And no, no, we. I, I, it's all, it's all, it's all, uh, it's all flats in it. So it's just all people. You can't even go anywhere. It's just filled with people. But people, no people have jobs anymore. So everyone just walks around having their one hour exercise for like twelve hours. You can't go anywhere. It's shape. I've got to go cycling. What I'm saying is, can you go with the window though? Have you got a sunbot at the window? No. Nah. Because like, I've got a friend that's now sunbathing in her bathroom from three to four every day. <laughs> nah. Too many big buildings around here, I think. It's just not happening. Yeah. I've, no. I, I, and I've, I've not I've no got my bike because Gordy stole my bike. Gordy, I would like that bike back in a yeah. responsible social distancing way. Bring it back, please, mate. Because it looks like it's cycling weather. Definitely. You could cycle it to air, sure. I'd love to, but obviously I'd probably need to do it in an hour, though, so I'd probably need to practice a wee bit before I could get to that level of speed. Yeah. Okay, Leila. Right, well, yeah, do the poem so far. People who don't know that Leila Josephine is a poet, uh, a writer, an actor. Is that yeah. is that right? I don't like. I don't think I'm an actor because I don't think I've ever really been in anything that I'm acting in. Because but your your show, your theatrical show, it you were playing. You played the role of your your father. <laughs> yeah, but that was kind of like a drag show rather than a acting show. Do you not think? But, well, I think you were acting. I mean, you were you were acting. Yeah, but I but, feel like if you say that you're an actor, people are like. Oh, if I seen you in anything, they expect you to be in like River City or the next. Well, just or just tell just tell them that you've been in River City. Nobody's nobody's <laughs> checking, <laughs> and nobody's Nobody even check, nobody's even checking my claim that there's a, not a seventeen cheese pizza. <laughs> Nobody checks these things. Nobody's checked that the claim that Bomb Scare broke the Guinness Book of Records for the most people on an internet TV show. Just nobody checks. But okay. <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to put okay. the intro from Amelia Baylor because we've got you live in session. So, you know, in fact, I'm going to Go do the it. other one and then we'll end with the applause from Layla, from from Amelia. So, okay, let's go with this. That was so fast. Uh, so this is called The Good Stuff. And it's, I wrote it as a list of things that I really like, love in life. And it's called The Good Stuff. The smell of garlic, grass, petrol, pals, poems that make you weep, 
tips, you filling your arms with me, the way town looks at Christmas, the moon and how it always comes back, expensive pens and red swimsuits, diving in, hair finally long enough to tie in a pony, plaits, armpits, elbows, collarbones, pubic hair and belly buttons, all in and all out, all bodies of water, all bodies of sky, the sound of cereal hitting the bowl, freckles, constellations, scalding hot, hot water bottles, the smell of the rubber reminds me of my mother, someone to take your temperature, sweat in summer, snow, dew, fruit pastel, ice lollies, things that fizz, child's pose, happy baby, learning how to say no, finding your key, your phone, your glasses, your vibrator, pictures of you when you were a child, the mosh pit, the war ending, people saying sorry and meaning it, how easily forgiveness comes, patterned wallpaper, flamingos, penguins, whales, kissing strangers on dance floors, the cha-cha slide, your friends, bed, laughing with their loves, bookshops, libraries, printers that are working postcards, handwritten letters, hotel rooms and the orgasm on the freshly made bed, blackheads, the edge, the chain, Fleetwood Mac, islands, horizons, eating fish and chips, skin, your period finally coming, waking up from deep long sleeps, blood coming out of the sheet, satisfying sentences, the tongue of your hometown windows, oh I am so grateful for windows and family and grandmothers and finishing books a film that sticks on you like a stamp finding a painting that is more like a mirror backpacks bikes circles wheels bats birds wedding stretching reality tv the tops of mountains contact lenses the right shoes all dogs easy peel oranges and easy bowel movements and drivers waiting for passengers running for the bus gosh <laughs> that's it <laughs> You call that radio. Um, Quarantine fucking radio. Here to tell people that we hear you. One job, one number. Yes. That was Leila Josephine. And that's the good stuff. Yeah, that's a new one. That's actually, the, like, I, I don't, I know we'll talk about this later, but I've just done a live album and... On the night, I was meant to finish with that poem, and like I forgot it, so it's not on the live album. So I'm trying to like do it as much as possible because I feel annoyed that I've forgotten. I forgot to do after it after actually spending time trying to memorize it and get rid. Re- yeah, it's such a waste. And it was the ending not- poem. It was like my clo- it was the big clothes, and then I forgot it. Could you not release the live album on Bandcamp and just record that as a bonus track for people who buy the album directly? Yeah, I mean, it'll, 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 it'll become something else. Somebody, it'll go somewhere. I think it's getting published in some anthology, so it will be somewhere, but you do, like, you do just get... It's the thing, kind of thing that keeps you up at fucking night, you know what I mean? Why? <laughs> Let's go to the comments. Jim Monaghan says, I was on that night in the air and brought the great Irish poet Cat Brogan. <laughs> We'd won the BBC Slam. I remember that. Do you know what, Jim? I, I was I trying remember. to remember who that poet's name was, actually. I was like, who is that again? Because I got her mixed up with another comedy or poet legend that you knew, and I couldn't remember her name. So Kat Brogan it was. She told me that I should edit. Um, <laughs> And she was right. And she was right. I think... Uh, I think I did a. I think we all could do it. I think I did a five minute. I think I did a five minute poem. And that's what I'm saying. If anyone's watching here from the poetry world and you're doing the poetry slam on Wednesday night, here we're doing a poetry slam at seven o'clock. Layla's got me one of the judges. And, you know, I know it seems a bit harsh that the time limit's three minutes. If it's good, it's fine. Just go over. But just have a good think about this. Just think, can I not sacrifice some of this shite? Because. Usually you can. 
does anyone really care? Always ask yourself that question. You probably don't care that much. And I have to tell yeah. myself that all the time. So don't, yeah. There's just so, a lot. Just, it takes me it takes me a long time to get to the point when I'm talking and I get it. I'm working on it, especially since I started doing the the podcast. I tell stories and I, I just I start I think I get caught in the moment of describing things and I'm just like, oh I remember that and then that happened and then I had a bit I then but I, I think that's part stuff. of your charm, Mark. I think yeah. that's I, like I like when you're doing like the poems and actually or like the, the pieces and your your introductions are always like way longer than your actual pieces. Yeah. I always think that that's like, I really like that as well. And I think that's what good performers do is they've got like the chat in between that like is almost like, and I think like poets do it really well when they are doing loads of serious stuff, but in between they make sure that they like get a few laughs. You know, that's really key as well. I but think, you can't really do that. In- yeah, I think poetry, I mean, you can do an intro on the slam as well. I, I'm a sucker for a good intro, especially if it's going to, yeah, intros are fine. It's not a strict rule, just three minutes, just have a think. Is it longer than three minutes? Then maybe you don't need it to be. We've got oh Amelia's apologizing for our pizza question. That was that was quite insensitive, Amelia, to be honest. That not not really cool. Yeah. She's got a nut allergy. See if she likes it. What's your favorite <laughs> nut, Amelia? Had any good almonds recently, Amelia? <laughs> We've got a peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Uh, we've got um, Tam, Tam Devance here. He says, delivers perfect poetry and impacts the crowd very well. Thank um, you. Well, that might be about you, actually. Uh, no, I, I, I doubt that. I, don't, I mean, I don't think anyone says I've got perfect poetry. Some people can enjoy my poetry, but it's definitely not perfect poetry. I'm not, I'm not, in, the, I'm not in the poetry club, but... You it's, you always say that you're so you think that we are all against you and there's no club there's no yeah. club Illuminati don't listen to her that's what the poetry <laughs> club says she's leader of the Illuminati <laughs> poetry club the poetry uh, the, Raymond Dito says anything over ninety degrees is considered a noise nuisance okay so maybe, maybe no man I think nineties would have been okay for us but I might be wrong. It was it was Fury's. Now Fury Murray's is a nightclub in the air that had noise complaints because it had neighbours next to it. So they they had different rules, I believe. Was it not Fury Murray's in Paisley and in Glasgow? One of my very first nights out was Fury Murray's. Yes, there was one. There was one in Glasgow. In I fact, it's actually know. came back. It came back just before the shutdown. Fury Murray's has reopened as. I don't know, but Kenny usually watches a show. He was involved in the in the the new place. Time, it's called Time, and that is reopened. And it's the old Fury Murray's. It's just kind of next to like Dixon Street Studios, St. Nick Subway, yeah. down that neck of the woods. Yeah. And they've reopened, and they've got a few Fury Murray's. Uh, they did a comeback Fury Murray's reunion night, and apparently it went was brilliant for people of a certain age. I had a great time. Yeah. Uh, didn't make it myself, but I've heard it was good. Uh, Alan McVicker, shouts to you, Alan. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Jim Morning said, "I love that poem." Fuck the rugby boys. Yeah, that was that fuck poem. Fuck the rugby rugby boys. And seriously, fuck the rugby boys. What was it? Yeah, all I, I, they use as women as toys. I mean, the rhyming was questionable. But... I know, but it was it was it was a good performance of the the sentiment came across. I remember one time I was wearing a. A rugby Scotland top, and you're like, I can't remember a comment you made. You like rugby or something, and then I was rugby, <laughs> rugby is it? And I was like, the funny thing is that I was actually, boys? Uh, and I was actually denying that I have any interest in rugby because I, it's a, I actually have a, a really, I wore, I wore it the other night. Actually, I've got a really good Scotland rugby top that that I got as a gift. And I don't watch rugby, but more in the and Scotland. Do you know what? The one thing that I think, if I could, if I could criticise my my first couple of years in poetry, I would say that I was too definite on my opinions. <laughs> <laughs> which is quite, which is quite common for poets. I mean, it's quite common <laughs> for most performers. Like, I 
That well, that's why you know writing it in the eye. That's why sometimes I tend to write in the third because I'm like, this could, this could change this opinion. Yeah, I think that that's the really hard thing about being a writer is that like you, what you do is permanent when you are not permanent and you are always changing. And I, honestly, I get quite embarrassed about certain things that are now permanent and um, that I've written about. And you just you do as an artist just have to accept that people will assume that that's how you still feel about stuff or whatever but now when I'm writing I try not to be so quite so definite on things and rather than like say what my opinion is like you offer a kind of landscape and then the audience can kind of make their opinion for you do you know what I mean rather than you being rather than you preaching well that's what's quite good about alter egos I suppose as well mm, but, obviously, but obviously Leila Josephine's not an alter ego that's you yeah, I think so. Yeah, mostly. I think people think that they like know me. When I don't think they really do. They know parts of me, but I think people can be quite surprised at. I think people are are, are sometimes quite surprised at like how I can be quite like unsure of myself. I think maybe in my poems I do seem quite sure of myself, but actually as a person I'm a bit more like, oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Is that maybe the is that maybe the acting background? Because I think maybe that's why. I mean, it surprises me that the air gig was only your second gig. So I must have seen your first gig, and I would have assumed that you'd already knew what you were doing. So because you've got that drama yeah. background, which means you must you're coming out straight away with confidence. So I think that's what's coming from mm. acting confidence. Just gives the assumption that you know exactly what you're talking about. But in a way, you're speaking your truth, but you're you're saying it with such uh, vigor that people think that you're sure of yourself. But you're actually just quite good at performing yeah pretending i know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah um yeah i would definitely say that like obviously my performance background has like i definitely have like some skills and tools and stuff that i can use to kind of read a room and know how to like warm up properly and like things like eye contact and all that that was never a struggle for me like i always knew kind of how to do that from from going to drama school but um I think that I think no matter who you are as a person you have a public life and you have a private life and you know your your public life would be to your friends like who you are at a party or you know who you are online like that's so different to who you are like when you're by yourself or when you're with a partner or like close friends or family and I think you have to like like you sometimes like I know that people have like identity crisis crisis because they're like oh I feel like this person but I'm really this person and and actually like as you grow older you realize that you're just loads of different people to different like people so I think that that is something that you start to understand but as an artist you do have to um I suppose hold the fact that that people will think that they they know you even though they, they don't really well, we've got Johnny Mustard says 100% you're an actor. That was a theatrical piece of genius. Thanks. Thanks, John. Well, actually, John was one of the... John said such good things about your show that I made a point of making sure... Because it was so, it was so difficult because you were clashing with about, I don't know, five other shows at the same time. And I only went up to the... I didn't have any fringe stuff on this year apart from... I think I with one band gig or something like that, but so I was only up the fringe twice, I think. And what what, what a weird clash you sat that in the front was. Row. Yeah, I was you sat in the front, in the front row, did you not? Yeah, yeah. well, I did get. We were running late, so we arrived just as the. It was only for everyone else was scared of the front row, row so we were there. Also, I, I was running. I, I honestly didn't think those are the best seats in the house because I I've got this theory that like so the show was like so hit or miss for people. People either like liked it, loved it, or they absolutely hated it. And I've got a theory that the second half of the audience, like towards the back, hated it because they can't see anything, or they like I not giving them eye contact because I can't see them. And the front half liked it, so that's my theory about why it was so hit or miss. <laughs> well. It could be that. I mean, I think maybe there, there's a lot of comedy in your your facial responses to stuff. So yeah. maybe maybe we do get a better. I think people are just scared of the front row when they're going to a show. They don't under, They don't know what's going to happen at the fringe. I was a bit nervous about being at the front. 
I, I didn't I, like you for anything, did I? I don't think so, no. But I just, I just felt like there was a build a threat being singled out. I didn't know what the show was going to be, so it's like the threat of what could happen here. I'm in the front. Also, we were running late, so I, I was, I, I needed a pee for the whole, the whole show oh, as well. That's a nightmare. But I just, I just, I just, um, it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me at all. It was, oh. it was a, I thought it was a great show. I thought that. I was genuinely confused, which is good because my my worst criticism of theatre, poetry, music in general is when I you know when I figure it out. So if I go, oh yeah, this band listens to that band, or this poet has been listening to that poet, and you know it's like I kind of switch off quite easily. So with this one, I was genuinely like, what is actually happening here? What is going on? And obviously, you you were act. If anyone has not seen it, so Layla's playing the role of her dad, who's uh, a middle-aged man who's like doing a barbecue and stuff. I can't really explain it. I can't really explain it, and I don't want to explain it too much in case I give any spoilers away. But yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do it again. But it, pretty much, like I was in a drag act as my dad, um, and my mum narrates the show, and it was all about like picking apart like the toxic masculinity of him, and like half the show you you like really. Like, like him and he's like really nice and funny and like whatever and then you start to get a little bit more CD and a little bit more like angry and those kind of things and, and the audience are and I understand why you're confused because the audience are like oh, I don't know if I'm meant to like this person or not I don't know if I'm at a drag show or a theatre show like I know that this is a woman but like she looks like a man and like I, I think that that like blurred line was always like really intentional because I wanted people to be like I don't know what I'm watching here and that reflects on that reflected on my relationship to my dad because I was I was always really confused about it as well and um so you see you're not you're not going to do it again it's over it's so do you know what the, you sick it theater, you sick it it's so hard I'm sick of it but also, but also, it's such a difficult landscape to like work in. Like, I find it like cause when I did hopeless, hopeless was like I could carry it in a rucksack and it could go anywhere and it could be anything. But Daddy dragged the set is so big that I can't just like I can't just pay for a van to take it wherever. So it becomes like expensive, and I have to have a specific like person to do the lights and the sound and everything, and like. Like, I have, like, a lot of experience in theatre, but I just find it so hard to, like, get a foot in the door. Like, like after the Fringe, I thought that, you know, I would be approached and people would be interested in doing a tour and, like, all of this stuff, but it just seems like a lot of closed doors. And, like, that's the great thing about Spoken Word is that, like, I've always just been able to be quite, like, mobile in it and it doesn't, like, cost me much, even if I'm not, you know... um not getting paid like paid much for it or whatever I've always it's not a huge cost but with theatre like you're paying so much to then get nothing back and it's so much effort like if I do a show for Daddy Drag I have to have like three or four days rehearsal which means three to four days off work which means I mean this is so boring but pretty much all I'm saying is that like it's a very difficult field to just like put yourself out there all the time without feeling like you're being completely exploited Absolutely, and with poetry, there's obviously less there's less money in poetry. But like you said, if you're going to, you can you can just go on a train or a bus or a plane to new places and have these good experiences in front of an audience. And poetry audiences, in general, are, are likely to to buy a a lyric book or a, a pamphlet. Yeah, not that I've ever had a pamphlet, but I see other people selling them, and they seem to you do all right. We've been. I've been in talks about it. I've been in talks about it. I wanted to do the uh, to celebrate ten years of Gyro Babies. We're going to have a the best of lyric book thing. So I'm well, in you talks. Should definitely do that. Well, they were in talks. I'm in talks, but shutdown happened and I got distracted, and nobody nobody contacted me to say that the talks were that I'd forgot about the talks. So I think that they've just forgot about the talks as well. I don't know if it's a good time to. I can guess. I can guess who you're having the talks with as well. well I can guess don't... why. <laughs> you're all bloody yeah. useless you might be right you might be right um but it's not really a good time i mean it's not really a good time to to release things but speaking of which no. you have you have released 
your new album this week. It came out on, on Friday on Spotify. I'll put it on the wee banner. It's called Archive Live, which kind of rhymes if you pause. Archive Live. Uh, it's a half right. It's a half right. What is it? Has it got a name? Yeah, it's called Archive Live. No, I mean, does it have a name? That, that type of rhyming? Archive oh, okay. Live. Yeah. I would call it a half rhyme, but that's probably not the correct term. A half rhyme. It's a half rhyme. <laughs> so half rhyme. Half rhyme. We've got uh, Lou two three says love that poem. Really enjoying this interview. Uh, Mira Mary Ram says hey, hi, Leila Josephine. Anyone else in your family with a flair for poetry? That's an interesting question. Uh, no, I don't think so. My mum. My mum, uh, she like paints, this is like in her later life, she like paints now and she plays the penny whistle. Um, so she's like kind of creative, um, but not no poets, really. Um, oh, so anyone who's tuned in, by the way, I've lost my phone, which is mental because I've not went anywhere in about a month. So I can't really, I can't really what share this. I don't know, I don't know. These things happen. I can't share this anywhere, so I want you all to hit the share button before Layla's next poem. If everyone could hit the share, Layla, have you shared it to your page? Your page. Yeah, is... I have. To... Yeah. Again. Yeah. Sh sh share. Let's share it. Let's share it. And also for okay. a Mickey, Mickey Nine fans that have joined us, your documentary is coming at half past eight. And also a shout out to any Mickey Nine's band members or fans who would like to to call that radio, like to actually call. You can actually call that radio. Because your documentary is coming on at half past eight. Now, I don't know if you know the story behind this documentary, Leila, but this documentary was made by so Daryl Coburn, who I know he's he's done stuff like the, the Christmas Pimpin music video. Daryl's very good. They made a documentary about Mickey Nines about four years ago, and everyone remembers getting interviewed for it, and nobody's seen it. Nobody, not even the band, the Mickey Nines have not seen it. And it kind of disappeared. Nobody knew what had happened to it. Apparently, it was ready. We, we'd heard rumours that it might have been on a, a film festival or something. But then it just disappeared. Cool. And I've asked Mickey Nice, I was like, what has happened to this? And then I see another night that it's going to get released today. And you call that radio has got the first world premiere of it. Nobody's seen it. I haven't even That's watched it myself. Show. I've had it all day and I've not watched it. I watched the first 10 seconds and I've seen John McMustard. And I just thought, nah, I'll wait. I'll leave it. <laughs> so if anyone wants to check that out, that's one at half past eight. And I don't know if you've ever heard, if you've just joined us for the first time, you call that radio as a show. We're here every day at seven o'clock and you can actually call that radio. So after Layla and after the, the documentary, we can, you, can, you can call us and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, that's it. I'm going to show you a wee thing. And Layla, if you can also maybe have another poem you're allowed to take us in at the darkness if you want to go for a darker thing uh maybe i've not got anything too dark oh yeah we'll keep it oh that's right we're keeping it positive because the times are dark I've got, themselves I've got a wee thing. i don't know if it's a poem but i've got a wee thing i wrote about i wrote the first week i was in lockdown that might be quite nice to share since we're all in lockdown and it will be outdated soon yeah well, well wait, let's, let's go with that then let's go with that okay Okay, cool. Do you want me to do it now? Yeah, I think we'll just do it. I think we'll do it now. Aye. Okay, cool. I've been told that after a while, your hair starts to wash itself. I'm looking forward to seeing if this is true. My bras are finally out of fashion. They're on hold to universal credit and applying for jobs in Sainsbury's. Stay safe makes me cringe. But I find myself whistling it like a prayer every time Jack leaves for work. I'm forcing myself up in the mornings, even to just make a cup of tea. I have dabbled in depression and know too well the thrum of an empty house. I'm awfully distracted, changing tasks from stretching to reading to staring. I'm trying to use all the rooms in the house getting to know how the different hours of light hit. I'm in an intimate relationship with the sight of birds outside. 
the, we the two well-kept pigeons. The crow is thick like treacle, the sunflower yellow beak of a blackbird building a nest in my chimney. This year it doesn't seem to bother me. I'm grateful for the company. I've started typing, I hope you're well, at the start of emails. And I think that I mean it. My phone is the sun. And I am the whole earth orbiting, checking in, making sure I still exist. Hello, remember me? I'm still here. I spent eight hours bathing in its rays one day. I put lipstick on for myself and pout in the mirror, take selfies before feeling silly and deleting them. Glued and anxious, I'm starting to realise that maybe I have been a capitalist, a cog, missing, making deadlines, products, ticking boxes, being busy. I feel like an out of time clock, just out of step. Doorways, frame, empty rooms, and I can tell my plants need water just by looking at them. Their leaves are gasping for water more than usual because I leave the heating on all day. The radio plays, and I dance enthusiastically to Dua Lipa, that girl can make a bop. I'm watching my shadows dramatically skip against the walls. When I'm alone, I am a superstar. My singing and dancing are impeccable. Today, Matthew, I'm going to be irresistible. I wonder why I never auditioned for The X Factor, and I add that to the list of things I must do when I get out. I'm pooing more than I need to just for somewhere to go, something to do. More than anything, I'm angry. I find myself shouting when I drop things. I'm furious at the government. I'm in Twitter spats and arguments. I'm scared of not being needed by anyone. I lose my temper at the Wi-Fi like it has ever owed me anything. And an hour before Jack comes home, I usually get dressed and brush my teeth. I stick his scrubs in the wash, extra hot while he takes a shower. I miss my mum and I worry for her. It's like I've only just realised her age. She who lives on the west coast of a different country. She sends me pictures of the dog and sunsets on her seas. And it looks almost identical to my son on my sea. And I think that maybe we aren't so far from each other after all. But God. It feels really far. Gosh. I don't know it's, if it's a poem. I, I feel like it's a poem. Page. I think it's a yeah. poem. It's slow, what, what is the difference between a poem? Hold on, in fact, we'll give you the round of applause first. I think it just deserves a round of applause. Yeah. So, what what what, what is a good question? What is... A poem. When does it become a poem? What What is it? What is a poem? I don't, so I because I do a lot of teaching, right? I like teach a lot of like young people poetry and spoken word and stuff. I'm a firm believer that anything you want can be poetry. So like I'll so if I'm like teaching some like wee rages or something, like I'll do rap with them rather than poetry because they'll think like I, I do m and m quite a lot with them <laughs> so they'll like start realizing that rap i is like poetry and and then you just frame it differently or you know i like if people just want to write a big a big like kind of like letter or, or something like that i say that that's poetry as well or if they want to write a story i say that's poetry because i think that people feel stupid already so like you don't have to add another thing to it to make them feel even more stupid because I think that that's the reason that a lot of people don't want to express themselves and um, so I like to say that everything is poetry but then I suppose I I get worried that um people think I'm stupid because I'm just not doing poems yeah <laughs> well know. no well that's it I mean if you technically you're just write a, a if you write a thing just write down your thoughts and you just say it and a voice like you're saying it, then it's a poem. Yeah. I also work with a lot of people that can't write. So I would get them to, I sometimes like would record them rather than like write. And okay. then I like to think that that's also poetry as well. So I think that that, and that just like means that it's really accessible and anyone can do it. Interesting. It's and really and um, so obviously if this is someone that, that can't write or read, 
if they're listening back to themselves, is, would they be able to memorise a bit of work or would they be able to edit it without just do it that way? I don't know if I've ever, I don't know if I've ever taken it that far, but I've definitely made some like pretty cool soundscapes with people that can can't write, which is cool. Amazing. Well, we've got loads of comments coming in. Loads. Let's let's catch up with them. Uh, great podcast, Mark. Again, really enjoying listening and watching. We've got David Greenshield says, Mark, Ethan, Mark, loving the show. has been on a wee catch up binge today. Brilliant interviews. Great to hear people proper relax and open up. Yeah, if you've if you've if you like the show tonight, there's about I think we've got about thirty shows up now. YouTube, Twitch, Facebook Live. You've been working hard. Yeah. Uh, thanks, but I usually do. <laughs> but I certainly have. I've worked just as hard since the shutdown as I would normally. Uh, we got Amelia's laughing. I think that was at the the nut the, the nut the nut, the nut question. Uh, Callum says Layla was a studio ember recording the Walrus and the Carpenter for Edinburgh Science Festival recently. Totally profe- total professional. Do you know Callum? Yeah, that was me. You want to? Uh, no yes, we did at this thing, yeah. But the science festival was cancelled, so I don't think the the sound recording ever got used. Everything's cancelled. Everything is cancelled. Tom Hanks is cancelled. Uh, so to, Tommy Mustard says I was in the middle, literally the best thing I saw at the fringe, and you went into the audience. With sausages. You, was, was that real? Was that real sausages you were throwing at the audience? <laughs> no, they're foam sausages. Over no, there, all right. Um, I resonate with your dad through the medium of you. I loved how conflicted it was. That's why it's amazing. It must have been emotionally draining. Loved the fishing carpet as well. Don't you just come and be my PR? Well, John, John, um, John, John, maybe, mate. I don't think John would want to be the PR for fringe shows. But maybe, maybe would. No, uh, but I get. I don't think get, anyone would do the fringe again. To be honest, I, I think it, John seemed quite exhausted with the fringe. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I think he he had a difficult difficult fringe. It's a I, tough thing. I, I think I, it's just a, it's just a, it's a really tough thing. It's and it's so it's so relentless. It's kind of like what you've done for a month. <laughs> not really. Nah, yeah, it's not. It's not as bad. Yeah. It's not Go as bad. Flyer. Not as bad. No, and also it doesn't cost you four grand to find out if it works or not. It that's costs. True, it does. Yeah. It does cost stuff. It does cost money to do a podcast, yeah. and that's why we rely on our patreons. We rely on our patreons to uh, Patreon. cover the cost. Become a patreon, and also I want to. A wee thank you to the new patrons, which is Johnny, Malcolm, Colette, Lou, and Hugh. We're up to 121. We're building a hang. So if you want to help us build a hang, you can do that there uh, by going there. Uh, we've got yet another good show, says Petra. Thanks, Petra. Alan Rorison says, following you on Spotify. So you've got a new... That's Archive Live is out now on Spotify. And... Please stream it. Even if you're not listening, if you like put it on mute and then just stream it, that would be great as well. And I think that's a, it's, a, it's quite an important thing as well that you've uh, because I, as someone who's got lots of spoken word stuff, well, obviously I've got I've got bags and bags, I've got loads of stuff written down, but in order for uh, you know, I've thought about played with the idea of maybe recording these things and putting them out, but without an audience, I don't think it's strong enough because I think a lot of my I mean, I think I've got good lyrics for, for, for doing it in music. I think I, I, I've got to the age where I'm quite confident that I, I have got lyrics. But I don't think that really works for spoken word. For spoken word, that it seems to be a totally different thing because you're, you're working with an audience and they laugh at certain things that you don't think are funny and all sorts of stuff going on. So with Spotify, you have decided to record it in front of a live audience so that you hear yeah, those reactions. So did you think yeah, about doing it? Good. Did you think about doing it without a crowd before? Yeah, I thought about doing it in a recording studio, but I don't think it would really have the same effect because, like, what I do is not in a recording studio. Like, it's not that's not the magic of it. It's, do you know what I mean? The magic is the two way kind of 
relationship you have with an audience. Um, so that's why I wanted to do the live gig format. And I don't know if it works. Like this is obviously an experiment and like I don't it's I don't know if people are gonna like it. Um but I did think that it was the best way for me to do it anyway. And I know some people do like music albums with their spoken word and stuff like that, but I definitely felt like I wanted to put on a night and then just like record it. And and that's why it's called Archive Live is this idea of like how we store things or how we like how we kind of archive things in order to either move on to something new or in order to remember certain moments and actually like you're not remembering certain moments by doing it in a studio I think that that was kind of the thoughts behind it I think also every, every artist is different because there's some spoken word stuff that probably would be okay without an audience but I think a lot of your stuff relies on audience interaction and the funny bit there's just funny bits where people are laughing that is part of your show so I'm not saying it wouldn't work just spoken word but I'm glad you've done a live version because I think it's something that I would rather I'm not listening to it yet but something that I would rather listen to and once again then you get the acapellas if you were to make it into a music album with just yeah. acapellas that's a bit boring so then what you do is you start putting some ambient drones in the background and then you start working too much on it. It takes a lot of effort. And then before you know it, you've got a music album. Like Bram Texture yeah. did some of that stuff. Uh, Bram made, and it's like, so what, what, you know, what is, he talked about that. What is the line between poetry with some background music or music, you know? Mm. A lot of people just, will say, well, sorry, they'll could, be like, oh, they'll say that it's like my, my stuff is like lyrical or musical, but like, I don't have a music bone in my body. And the other thing about me, like for me, like I I design my rhythm through my rhymes, so it won't it won't be in like couplets or whatever. I'll find the rhymes in like the middle of the sentences or whatever, and that'll either like speed me up or slow me down. And so when you put a beat on that, it can sound a bit a bit dodge because yeah. I'm not necessarily hitting the beat. Um, and there's some really amazing artists that can do it. Do you know No Name? Have you heard No Name? No she's like a, an American no. rapper, so she's like slightly out of she's slightly out of beat, which I really she does it really well. But when it's not intentional, it can sound really like really bad. I think, and um, so that's why I've always kind of stayed clear of music. But yeah, I, I mean, could <clears throat> write for music, but it would just not be able to have like beats. Like as you said, it would have to be like some ambient or, drone yeah. type stuff would be quite cool. I mean, I think what you should do is if you've got a decent microphone, record just record your uh, acapellas <clears throat> and maybe put them out as a, just put them out there and see if anyone wants to take up the challenge. I'm sure there's a lot. So I'm, I'm considering doing it just purely because there's a lot of bored creative people out there. So maybe they could do something with it, but I know what yeah. you mean because a lot of, a lot. I've done a track with um, Big Miz, who's a DJ. So I did Sunrises on the Kingston Bridge, which I think I did on the last show with you, Mark. Um, so, Big Miz, who's a DJ from Glasgow, he's done um, a remix of it. And then um, I have done, um, I, I did this poem called Andy from Finance, and that Savage Cut did a thing of that. So I have done it before. I just think that it, it I'm not very good at it yet. <laughs> We've got comments coming in saying, lovely, excellent poem, brilliant stuff. Hi, Alan. A wee <laughs> chat in the comments. A very talented young lady, says Angela Doherty. Oh, Hi, James. Hi, James, mate. Uh, Petra Joy says, love this poem about, about your love, your lockdown poem, awesome. The bird in the chimney is likely to be a jackdaw. I have them too, and they will know your face. They are super intelligent. Birds are awesome. I love birds, yeah. Let's go. So what, what, what? What, what, how many have you? Do you have poems just ready to go? Could we do another poem? Yeah, do you want to hear another one? Yeah, go for it. Um, the next one um, is on the album, so if you're streaming, it's called Weep, and it's um, I wrote it after I found myself crying, at, and I I'm a celebrity, get me out here episode <laughs> earlier this year, and I I just like have this thing where I'm like a huge crier. I don't know. Are you a crier, Mark? Or are you no, not no, crying? not even, not even a funeral, not even no. a try, a try. I mean, it can, it does, it can happen. 
But usually, you know, have you ever seen The Sopranos where a Car- Carmela cries at a toilet roll advert for no reason? And, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of shit going on. But maybe something like that could just get me. But it wouldn't be a big cry. It'd be, it'd be like, a, oh, I can feel it. I can feel it. I'm losing it. But yeah, not, not a big crier. Sadly. Well, I, I, wrote, think it's, I think it's good. I wrote, it's good for you. Yeah, I think it's good for you. So that's why I wrote this poem. It's called We. I cannot stop crying. I am a dam overflowing, a spot squeezed, splatted and snotted. I am an open wound seeping, a rainforest downpour. It would seem that I am spilling from my seams. I am a tidal wave, a tsunami. If only you could see me, my banks are breaking, the boys are bobbing, the boats are rising. I am unable to control myself but the telly. I cried, I am a celebrity, a plea to a charity, a dog trust advert, children winning tickets on the radio to a concert. I could be paid to weep for a widow at graveside. Recently, there isn't a day I haven't cried. I could fill a bath. I could run a river, I could star in an opera, no limits to my drama, I could boil my tears to make you a plate of pasta, as long as you didn't mind the salt, I have been broken in at my vault, and maybe I'm just crying for the swell of it, how it all oozes into our edges and soaks us to our toes, how some things shine and others are unfair to the bone, but just give me it all, don't ever let me close back up, because feeling it, is the only thing I've got. Yes. Amazing. I'm not even going to bother. With, I'm not going to. Do, I'm not even going to bother with the with that because what I'm going to do here is, the, you know, the, the the audience clapping. That's so. That's so. Last last poem. <laughs> what I want to do here is, this is a shout out to any Mickey Nines band members. I know you're out there. We want to, you haven't seen the documentary before, so I like the idea of you guys watching it for the first time and reacting to it. You call that radio. No. So you can actually call that radio. Call that radio. You can actually call that radio on a phone number. It's a real thing. You just phone <laughs> that radio on. 07340. Give us your thoughts, your opinions, your questions. Doesn't matter if you're mad at four in the morning. We're always here 24 hours a day. Maybe a voicemail, but we'll check it the next day. The kettle is always on. I mean, that metaphorically, because it would be very environmentally conscious to keep the kettle on, especially if you didn't know anyone was arriving. Just call that number. You call that radio 07340508500. Hello, you call that radio. How can I help you? Yeah. Brothers and sisters, may the peace that can only come from the one God be upon you. We are here to tell the people that we hear you. One God will not allow us and people of conscience to lose our morale. We see the crimes of this government, how they support every dictator and criminal on this earth. Sometimes you will feel down. Sometimes your morale will go down. Yes. Yes, that was a message to the Mickey Nines. A message to the Mickey Nines. One of you out there needs to come on this show during your, or maybe after the documentary, just, just to give us. I want to see. I want to see how you react to your film getting shown for the first time without anyone actually seeing it in the band. So that's him from half past eight. Not, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We've got lots of comments coming in. We're with Leila Josephine. Uh, James Rose says, I'm the same, Mark. I think I have a swinging brick when it comes to crying. A swinging brick? Swinging brick? <laughs> what does that mean? That's the <laughs> swinging brick. I have a swinging brick when it comes to crying. <laughs> I have a swinging brick. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like almost crying, but they're coming back. <laughs> it's a great phrase. It's a great phrase, James Owen. It's a good Thank. metaphor. I'd it's love a, to know. Uh, it's also followed up with nice poem. Nice poem, Leila. Um, and Lou23 says, love that. Uh, John Souter says, I've seen the Mickey Nines video. You guys are in for a treat. It's brilliant. How did you get to see Soapy? The band haven't even seen it. Uh, greetings from Mexico. Craig Lewis. Shouts to Craig Lewis. That's true. Uh, Craig Lewis actually emailed. Craig, I have looked at your email. I haven't clicked the link yet, so I'll check that out. Uh, but thanks for emailing and listening. Mexico. That's the furthest away. Is anyone further away than Mexico? I mean, I doubt it. Shouts to Craig. And Tracy Wilderness says, that's just minted woman. Word goddess. And we have always feel better after a good greet. Says Angela Doherty. Wise words. So, what is, do you get people, I mean, obviously, because you've been doing this for years now, People have favourite poems. So you actually get requests. Yeah. What is your most requested poem? Mm, I don't get that many requests, but people ask me for travel pillows a lot, <laughs> um, which like makes sense. Or tell me about your vagina. Go on, go tell me about your vagina that I get asked for a lot as well. Those two are probably the biggest ones. And they're the funny ones as well. Yeah, the, the travel pillow... Is, is hilarious. You just get so worked up and annoyed by the end of it. That no wonder. Yeah. And Beyonce, I think Beyonce a good one as well. Beyonce, so I actually stopped doing Beyonce back in the day because um, I got like a little bit of feedback about what it means to be writing about like a black woman from like a white perspective. So I actually just stopped doing it um, because that kind of made sense as well. I was kind of like, didn't know why I was doing it anymore. Because it was it was a poem about domestic violence, really. Um, and it was about her comment um, with, um, about, um, in her song, Drunken Love with Jay-Z, they mentioned like Ike Turner. I think the, the phrase is Ike Turner, turn up, eat the cake, don't play an cake anime, which is like obviously about Tina Turner and, um, uh, what's love's got to do with it, the film like i think he like smacks her face into a cake and um, so like my because that's in the song it was all about you know why they'd sang it at the grammys together but i just I, i'm also like well it's got nothing really to do with me so like i was like oh i, I don't really want to do it anymore i didn't i didn't see why i was doing it i was kind of like a self-righteous like oh you're terrible for doing this when i and when actually like on reflection like who am i to say anything really so that was kind of what why i stopped doing it what about what's other what's what are the other greatest hits on archive that people can expect so i think she was she's on archive live um i've got some new ones that are on it as well um i've got a new one called the edge of sanity which is um i'm quite pleased with how it's ended up um and it's got blue on it people like blue as well um and it's got big boys on it as well and people seem to like big oh boys. big boys you want to be a bad boy. <laughs> that, is, that is good. And it's good that we're also putting those behind, not a paywall as such, not like the Sunday Times putting uh, their criticisms of the Tory government behind a paywall. Spotify's free. Thing. Yeah, it's quite surprising. Well, it's quite mm, surprising. Definitely. The Sunday Can Times I ask you, did you watch the video of when Boris Johnson came out of the hospital? Did you watch that one? Where he's no, like, talking I've... about the nurses that were looking after him? No, I, I was, it was if it was the one in Easter Sunday, I was like the idea that he comes back on Easter Sunday because obviously I've actually done a podcast about coronavirus conspiracy theories, about the danger of fake news and people coming up with these, you know, mad theories that because they watched a YouTube video from Dr. Moonfruit and they think that this must be the truth. But I'm also yeah. sympathetic that people are skeptical and I, and this is one that I'm I, I genuinely can't believe that he was ill. And uh, just, you know, even if he died, I'd be like, show me the dead body. And even if he, he showed me the dead body, I'd be like, let's check the temperature. It's just like, it it's just talks really to me like a bad film. It's like a bad pandemic film. It's like, it's like, see if you were writing it as a film, it wouldn't be believable. It's just too ridiculous. But what, what, why I'm asking you about that is that 
I just when I was watching it, he was his language had slightly changed. So he was talking about like how the NHS is like ran on love, and he was talking like he went through all the nurses that had treated him and named them, and they were all like foreign, so they were all like from different countries. So like if Bre- if Brexit deals go ahead, like all those like immigrants will have to move back, and I was just like, this is like such a strange like video to watch and he looks like quite tearful as well and it just felt like really different from every other speech which other speeches sounds like he's going into a war where this one is it was just like it was like a different vibe so yeah. i was just interested to see like like i mean maybe it's because i'm like being too optimistic or whatever but i just wonder if it's like a good fucking the knock that you needed it's the swinging brick that you needed well we we did talk about it. We did talk about it uh, that on this show that we were hoping that the ghost of Christmas past would visit him in the night. You know, <laughs> yeah, it a, exactly. it's a better, a better, it's a more, it's a more positive thing to wish for than death. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying, like I said, I'm not saying he wasn't ill. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, just I can get why people would would not believe him. And I didn't watch the well, speech because I've I've been on all the five Gs conspiracy theories i've looked at them all i just think it's more scary to believe the conspiracies actually yeah well the, yeah i mean if, i maybe watch it it's just the idea that he did it on easter sunday i just couldn't stomach man i just couldn't uh, stomach the idea of him uh, rising again on easter sunday oh my yeah. god it made me feel sick i'm sorry it was just made, made me just, feel sick i feel i, I feel like I feel I, when it comes to conspiracy theories, like I get dead into them. Like I don't necessarily believe them, but I like I like reading them. And some of them I do think are true, like you know some stuff. But I think that it's very dangerous that people are so against conspiracy theories that they don't open their their mind to there being an alternative truth. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not talking about like five G or whatever. But if history has ever told us anything is that we're probably not getting told the full truth at all times. So it's oh, like all about like just like keeping an eye on everything, you know, and keeping an open mind, I think. Absolutely. And uh, that's it's been quite a strange experience for me because as someone who, you know, I'm I'm not normal Normalton. I'm I'm a former heavy stoner who grew up with the Zeitgeist and I'm open to all these kind of things. But also I do find that a bit dangerous when people are just throwing really dangerous information mm. about. So I'm just trying to just sort of fix that. But then as a result, I do worry that sometimes I do look like, like I'm, you know, I get accused of now following the mainstream. You believe everything Boris yeah. tells you, don't you? And I'm like, no, nah, I don't believe, I don't believe he's ill. But it's just like, there's got, hopefully we're going to find a way that we're not, you shouldn't, don't call people a tinfoil hat. That's not helpful. And don't call mm. people normal, normalton. Although no one's doing that apart from me. But don't, there's got to be a, a bit in the middle where we can meet and say, none of us know what the fuck's going on. And I think my theory right now, which like I said, I don't know anything either, but I feel like this is an example of genuinely nobody knows what the fuck's going on here. And yeah. that's where I'm at just now with it. And that, I think that makes more sense to me than there being like a global world conspiracy where every world leaders are in it, every scientist, every doctor, everyone's all in in this big, yeah. beautiful conspiracy in order to give us uh, nanotechnology vaccinations that might give us autism, just to make Bill Gates some money. Seems a bit much for me. It could just be a really nasty virus that's fucked everyone up. I hadn't heard that up. one. Yeah, I hadn't heard that one. I think, like, I think definitely having, like, a partner that's in the hospital is definitely, like, good for keeping my conspiracy theories under wraps. Um, but also, I think, like, no matter what, it's not worth the risk to put people in danger and potentially make people die. So, like, if we have to stay inside for 12 weeks, then potentially that is a risk that we should be taking, whether it's, you know, 100... I, I, I do believe that we are going through this pandemic. Um, but, you know, even if, we, even if even if we... It was a possibility that we weren't, would you not still take the risk to, like, protect the vulnerable people in your life? Absolutely. And we've got lots of comments coming in from that. Uh, there was no ventilator for Boris, says Angela. Well, it's like Madonna said, it's a great equaliser. 
it's the the virus doesn't care how rich you are or how famous you are, but if you're rich and famous, you're probably going to get slightly better medical care. Um, respect all opinions, but criticize all of them exactly. Joe McCann, I love the fact that you've quoted Jackal Trades. Jackal Trades says it a lot better than I could, and that is respect all opinions, but criticize all of them. And try not to, you know, while you're criticizing things, because there is some stuff that you're just like, well, that's like, come on, the moon's not a 5G antenna. That can't be right. But you don't need to, you don't need to patronize people. I think it's important. I, I think, I think more than anything, the government are opportunists. So I think what's going to happen is whatever, whatever this is about, they're going to take an opportunity to and they have make it. Bigger. Already with the bill that's passed, it's taken away a lot of rights and they'll get looked at again in six months. It's up to everyone to put pressure on them to if the if things get back to semi normal. I don't think they will get back to normal. I think but that, I think also small businesses, you know, you're gonna be looking at a very, very hard landscape for small businesses to survive. Like even though the packages are good, like we're gonna be like we're going to be in debt to the government, whether that is like a direct debt or whether that is that they don't have the funds to cover our other things in years to come. And that's not going to come from taxing the rich. Uh, shout out to Frankie Boyle's tweet earlier. Big shout out to everyone who voted Tory thinking they would only fuck up for other people. Can I just give a wee, a wee brag right now? Frankie Boyle follows me on both right. my... Instagram and Facebook. That is oh, that's good. one of the best things that ever happened to me. That's pretty cool. Do you know, I'd, um, I had Stephen Fry following me. What? That is That tops that mine. And I, that's and that was, incredible. No, Frankie Boy was good. It was, no, it was just, it was years ago as well. It was like we weren't even famous at the time. And I actually well, how, met. How, you can't just leave it there. How, how did that happen? I don't know. I just, they just followed gyro babies. They like gyro babies for some reason. I don't know why. And Amazing. Eric Colin must have a song that mentioned Stephen Fry, so I messaged it to Stephen Fry because they were trying to get their Stephen Fry retweet. Uh, guess what happened? Nothing. He retweeted. Just... Oh, no, no, nothing, nothing, nothing happened. They just dinged me. But it, he's heard of his. I don't know what that means, he's but it means. Oh, dude, that's class. Uh, James Owens says he agrees with you. Um, and Alan Rorison says Boris's Boris is a jobby. Uh, brilliant banter says Joe McCann. You must have twa phones, says Richard Banana Man. No, I don't. Do you know I've not? I don't know. This phone I expect to turn up, and also when when I played that jingle earlier on, you can actually call that radio 07840. I don't know where that phone is either. So there is twa <laughs> phones, but I've no idea where they are. And it's time. That is it's, so impressive. And do you know what? Like, I literally know. Like, I can picture this moment of seeing you at Kelburn one day. I think it was, like, on the third day. And you're, like, still wearing the same clothes. Like, believe me, I'd be like, I've lost my phone. I've lost my phone. And you didn't stop to talk. You just kept walking. I've lost my phone. I've lost my phone. We've got a message for Petra, which is quite a good point. We forgot to do the name drop when you said Frankie Boyle uh, followed you. And I forgot oh. to do the name drop when I said Stephen Fry followed me. Sorry about that. Oh. I, I ruined it. I ruined it. Uh, you, you are tuned in that you call that Radio TV. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have Mickey Nine's documentary, the world premiere of the Mickey Nine's documentary, in a wee minute. Uh, but just before we do that, I just want to let you know what's happening. We've got, coming up, we've got this guy, Doghouse, uh, who is the former frontman of Sit Note, who is my favourite live band ever. I've actually... It's the, my favourite live band of all time. And I went on a... I did a Scottish tour with them <laughs> for about two weeks, a few many years ago. Some funny times, and uh, we'll be talking about that. And he's normally a travelling artist around the round the whole of Europe. Obviously not anymore at the moment. So we'll be speaking to Doghouse, who's going to be doing some a live performance. Who else we got? Uh, Poetry Gary, Slam. Poetry Slam. I can't find the flyer for that, actually. So, no, we don't have that. This is Layla. That's what's happening now. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And we've got Kitty Get Claws. I've not got that here yet, but Kitty Get Claws is from London. She's here on Thursday. Wednesday night, we've got the, you call that Poetry Slam, the semi-finals of that. That's going to be good. And Looking forward to that. And th and I haven't Thursday's, done a slam in ages. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I think there's going to be something good about the whole vibe. I think it's going to be good. Uh, so, James Owen says, give me your number and I'll phone it. As much as I'd love to give out my real phone number to the internet, uh, I just, it's no battery. I've tried. Uh, Raymond Dito says, the well, pandemic so killed a lot of smaller prisons of hospitality. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of, uh, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be fucked, let's be honest. So yeah. we just got, to, just got to do our best and look out for people. Uh, Frankie Boyle blocked my husband on Twitter. And Sun Sunday Times article. Uh, John Pilger gave a good analysis of it. COVID-19 and privatization. It's just free market capitalism on a Russia Today interview. Yeah, so I mean, I think like the opportunism comes in with that bill that got passed is definitely a bunch of stuff that they wanted to pass anyway. And that doesn't mean that, that they created it. I'm sure Jacob Rees-Mogg is buying up everyone's houses and businesses and properties. It doesn't mean that he created it, in my opinion, obviously. So, Leila, before we go, I'm just going to cut to a Mickey Nine song and then the documentary. Uh, so we could either finish on some words from yourself or a poem. It's up to yourself. I've got like a really short poem that I was going to do. It's just like like less than a minute. Oh, just, no, it's, there's, no, there's no big rush. And also, this is a shout out to all the Mickey Nines fans. If you want people to see the Mickey Nines thing, and if you're a Mickey Nines band member, hit the share button now. It's going to be Mickey Nines time in a wee minute. Yeah, I'd love to hear a poem. What's it called and what's it about? So it's called Hope, and it was the last um, poem in my show, Hopeless, um, but it felt like it was a good one to do again. Um, and I wrote Hopeless um, during the kind of immigration refugee crisis, and it was all about trying to find hope, even though things were quite bleak. And I read this amazing book by this author called uh, Rebecca Solnit, and it's called Hope in the Dark. And she has this quote that I love saying, and it's um, that hope is not a lottery ticket that you sit on the sofa and clutch feeling lucky. It is the axe that you batter down doors with. Um, and she always said that like hope is like an active thing rather than a passive thing. So even though things seem really bleak right now, it's important to still be like, doing the actions that you can um, in order to be thinking about the future. And uh, yeah, this poem's called Hope. This moment ends and the next begins. And within that crack shines possibility that we have the ability to shift to something else. Hope picks up the pieces even when there is nothing left but dust. Hope is the trust of the waves that come to the shore time and time and time again, and they know that with every touch, the landscape changes and mountains are made. Yes, that's amazing. And do you have any final words for... No, thank you so much for having me. Um, if anyone wants to listen to the album on Spotify or iTunes, um, on Deezer, which I've never heard of, but apparently it's on that as well, um, that would be great. And also... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the slam on Wednesday as well. That'll be great. And it was great chatting to you. I, I, absolutely brilliant. Thank you for doing it. And thanks for doing the, the slam on Wednesday. I will see you then. I'll see you then. And, and enjoy the documentary as well. Yeah, well, you can watch it. You can enjoy it too, Leila. It's going to be, it's there for everyone. So I'm just going to put up a wee banner here. Let me know in the comments, which Mickey Nine song would you like to hear? What's, what Mickey Nine's video should we put on right now? To get in the mood for this documentary. This is a world premiere of a documentary the band haven't even seen. The only person that's seen this is the directors, the editors, and Soapy for some fucking reason. No idea why he's seen it. World premiere of the Mickey Nines documentary will begin in a minute. We are here every night at seven o'clock. This is you call that radio television. See that? World premiere of Mickey Nine's documentary will begin in a minute. We will be back with the documentary. Could everyone hit the share button? If you're a Mickey Nine's fan, hit the share button. Let's see what the comments say. Uh, hold on, some, some stuff from Leila J Josephine. Angela Doherty says, lovely poem. Rang me. Says, Eddie McCurry. Defunct says, Soapy. 
planet. Uh, never heard of them, to be honest. Well, you're in for a treat, mate. You're in for a treat. Mickey Nines are great. Silence is violence. Okay. Well, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for... Because I'm kind of thinking, I'm missing, I'm, I'm missing today because it was so sunny, I'm missing beer gardens and I'm missing venues. And it made me think of the old venues that are no longer with us. And it got me thinking of the sound house. This is You Call That Radio. We'll begin in a minute with the Mickey Nines documentary, but first, the sound house. Directed by Harold Francis. Are you tuned in? Uh, this is You Call That Radio. We just had Leila Josephine in the studio. And now it's time for the Mickey Nines world premiere of the documentary. What was that? Let us know in the comments what Mickey Nines tune you would like to hear. We're going to go live in about five minutes. I'm an animal, living in the wrong enclosure 
Loving in the wrong environment. Loving in a cage, not go for me. I strike my bed. Living in the wrong enclosure. Loving in the wrong environment. Loving in a cage, not go for me. I strike my bed.
Mickey Nines. The Mickey Nines ammunition. We're about ready for the documentary. Let's see your comments. Type a comment. Give us a fucking yaldi. And we'll put it on the screen. Okay. Yes, okay, fucking yeah, there is. We're live here. We're about to go live. Fucking Yaldi says Lou. Yaldi for John Soupy. Brilliant. Yaldi, Yaldi. Who are you gonna call? Blessing for this is Martin with the Bank. How are you doing, Martin? Right, okay, it's an absolute honor to to introduce you to the, the, the world premiere. Apparently nobody in the band's seen it yet. So this is quite an exciting thing. I will just go for it then. Uh, you're tuned in to you call that radio, by the way. We're here every day at 7 o'clock. Every fucking day. Tonight we had Leila Josephine. Tomorrow we've got Sound Thief and Eurovision. We've got Doghouse on Tuesday. A slam on Wednesday and Thursday. We've got Kitty Got Claws for London. We're here every day at seven o'clock. And sometimes after the interview, we have a wee after party. And tonight's after party is the world premiere of the Mickey Nines documentary, which is called The Magic Behind the Mask, uh, made by Daryl Coburn. And let's just let's just go into it, I think. I'm going to do a shout out to any Mickey Nines band members who haven't seen it. If they want to click the link and join us for a wee chat after it, then you can actually call that radio. So, yeah, I'm just going to do that. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Hit the share button. Strap yourself in for the, the world premiere of the magic behind the mask. <laughs> You call that radio. Um, fucking fucking radio. We're here to tell the people that we hear you. One God will not allow. You call that radio. I hope okay. you want to see it. You call that radio. <laughs> You call that radio. <laughs> you want to say it, that's kind of part of the fun. Powered by our patrons. Brothers and sisters. Shouts to Daryl Coburn. Uh, the, shouts to the Mickey Nines. Let us know in the comments if you're enjoying it. We'll try and bring some of the comments up during the screen if we can. And uh, thank you for to Leila Josephine. And everyone who tuned in, you called that radio. Tonight and every night at 7 o'clock. This is the Mickey Nines. The magic behind the mask. Who are you going to call Mickey Nine Nine Nine? Who are you going to call Mickey Nine Nine Nine? Nine? In America, Mickey Nine One One.
I know. It seems like we've got a wee. Sorry. It seems like we've got a little, a little incident here. Oh, ha ha! Gary's enjoying the the mistake. Do you know what I think's happened there? I think the reason that it's not playing is because I know enough people have shared the video. So if you want to see the magic behind the mask, hit the share button and that should bring everything back to normal. You're tuned in to you call that radio. Slight technical hitch there. Brothers and sisters, may the peace that can only come from the one God be upon you. We are here to tell the people that we hear you. One God will not allow us and people of conscience to lose our morale. We see the crimes of this government, how they support every dictator and criminal on this earth. Sometimes you will feel down. Sometimes your morale can go down. Maybe the government don't want you to see this video. Maybe that's what's happening. Ever thought about that? No, of course you didn't. You only think about yourself. We had a little issue there. I believe that everything is now resolved. So, let's do it. This is the Mickey Nines world premiere of the documentary by Daryl Coburn. Enjoy. Turn it up, indeed. What we're going to do here is... No, but there's, there's 45 viewers here. That means that at least 41 of you didn't hit the share button. This is a big deal. This is the Mickey Nines world premiere. They're sitting... They've, they've got their own red carpets. Everyone's ordered red carpet in. And because of social distancing, everyone's got to have their own personal red carpet. Do you know how much work went into this? The least you could do is hit the share button. This is the world premiere of the Mickey Nines documentary. You're sure that you call that radio. Uh, technical issues prove it's authentic in these uncertain times. Don't worry, we've figured it out. There'll be no more. There'll be no more sound issues anymore. We're trying a thing for the first time. I appreciate your patience. <clears throat> yeah. 
Thank you to everyone for your patience. We're ready to go this time. Basically, there was an audio problem, but we're ready now. And we're ready. We're good to go. Who are you gonna call me na na na? Who are you gonna call me na na na? Who are you gonna call me na na na? In America, me na one one. <laughs> all I've done all my life so you know some people like the football some people like uh, you know ice hockey mines has always been going to gigs I, mean, I think John had sent it to me it was shark in the water from um I don't know what club it was where was it McCool's McCool's and when I played it it was it was honestly do you know what I've never got a vibe or an instant kind of hit or energy from a, a YouTube video apart from that it was it kind of got you right there, you know? It's like, wow, I need to see these guys live. And I mean, that was it. Ever since, we've just been a, like a wee fanboy following them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> decided we'd go and see the Mickey Nines because it was near where, where other gig was and myself and my wife both left absolutely blown away by the the energy that the guys had you know the danceability we went to the other gig to meet friends we walked in and everybody went where on earth have you been look at you the two of us were dripping in sweat just smiles from ear to ear and just absolutely loved it. And it had been years since any band had done that to us on seeing them for the first time. So I come to see this band I've got Mickey Nines. And he saw them, he was telling me about them. Mickey Nines, he wears this mask and stuff. He's, and does all these moves. And uh, he goes, you know, oh, you should hear them. And I'm like, oh, right, oh, whatever. Because <laughs> I hadn't heard them yet, you know, and I was doing other stuff. And, and he goes, look, there's their Facebook page. And then I saw them and he goes, there's something about them, you've got to see them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> First time we saw Mickey and I, we played Mudstock. This band on stage, it was incredible. It was such a buzz. And the crowd was just rocking. And it seemed like one of the best bands I've ever seen in my life. They were just like, the singles on stage, they had this mask on, and he was dancing around. Um, and it was like seeing like what it must have been seeing like the Happy Mondays in like 88 or something. It was like just buzzy happening, vibey, he was totally in command of the crowd. Um, and it was just, it was just, we couldn't believe it. You know, we just kept looking at each other going, is this real, are they, are they a real band? <laughs> <laughs> there's an expectation 
from us and from from our fans and from the Mickey Nines fans that they're they're going to get a, an experience. They're not they're not just going there to watch four guys staring at their shoes or fourteen guys and girls staring at their shoes. It's they are going to interact and they are going to get involved and they're going to walk away feeling that they had a proper experience, a proper show. I mean, they actually ended up playing here in this living room. Yeah, yeah, that was great. That was amazing. The room was packed <laughs> and it was sweaty and it was loud. And we told the neighbours and they're usually quite happy about it, but um, yeah, they were like, oh, come on, <laughs> the drums need to go. <laughs> the band and the fans at a live show are together. You know, it's quirky, as you say, and it's real escapism from your daily life. At the moment, I'm still a student as well, study law. I work for a large organisation in quite a senior management position. Uh, in an outdoor nursery, uh, working with kids before school. As a fraud investigator, um, I am I. Um, so I need to unwind a wee bit when I can. Um, quite a pressurised job, so every opportunity I get to come and enjoy myself and unwind. Responsibility for staff and things like that, you know, and you get your, your hundred and 20 emails a day and your 65 phone calls and you've got to get around the country. So when you get a night off, you're just looking for total detachment from reality. And the Mickey Nines give you that every single time. Music is, is is wonderful, but there's this intangible energy at every gig, and even when you play their music, you can feel it. I mean, literally, I think you can, you can feel the energy coming through you when you listen to their music. The kind of combination of their different elements that they can knock it out of the park on tap. I think they're, they're quirky, very, very <laughs> political, but not in your face political it's all very tongue-in-cheek but there's a you know there's quite a dark side to them as well they're really innovative like to see them live is such a galvanizing experience they're, they're, they're enigmatic and it really rubs off on the crowd obviously and gets you moving dance is a real way of escapism as well and there's just no everyone just dances i think ultimately the dance is of one of the live shows is just fantastic and you know when you go to pay to see a band you're looking to have a good time and the Mickey Nines pretty much guarantee you're going to have a good time. Sorry, we're getting it's going a bit slower, but we've just I think we've figured it out so that it should be fixed now. Sorry about this. How's enjoying it so far? 
For fuck's sake, put some 10 bob in your internet. Just do one with that just now. All right, guys. Sorry about that. A wee technical hitch there. I hope we figured it out, though. I hope we figured it out. The problem is, is that we're streaming it through here and we're watching it on various devices to make sure that it's working right. So let's start with that. I've put 10 bob in my internet. How he's enjoying it so far anyway? First time I ever saw them, I was blown away. Angelo, when are they headlining Glasgow? I think next time Glasgow's on, which sadly is not here this year. Me too, what a band. Great band, Mickey Nines. It's time for part two. Shouts to Sorcerer as well. And shouts to Soapy for uh, getting Buckingham Palace to let him film his bits. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, we're ready to go. Part two of the Mickey Nines documentary. is completely different when you meet them in person to when you first see him on stage and on these videos. It's good because that he's putting over a whole different personality and the mask and everything. You get this idea of who that guy is when you're watching him on the stage and all the rest of it. And then when you meet him in person, it's, it's a totally different person. I became very passionate about the Smiths and James. And I think throughout the theme of it, I like good front men. And I think Doogie's probably one of the best and most flamboyant front men I've ever seen. What he does on stage and and everything in the hands of someone else could be a disaster, you know? The, the things that, 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 that Doogie does on stage, it totally works. And uh, you've got to be a good actor and a, and a good performer to pull that off. Otherwise, it, it would fall flat. I listen to just isolate Doogie's voice when I'm, you know, just homing in and tweaking in the bits he's not singing. All you can hear is, <laughs> and what he's doing, he's dancing in between the bits. Of, you know, he's doing this, just getting totally getting into it. And then he then he does his his, his take. Shine in the water. slaps that mask on, he just, that, this energy we were talking about before, it just invigorates him and he's, he's I think somebody described him as like a kind of manic shaman on stage, something like that one time, and I couldn't put it better, yeah, he's dancing about the stage, when he puts the mask on, yeah, it's like all performers, you know, they adopt a persona, or they become their persona when they get on stage, and you can definitely see that with Dougie. I think it's cool, it could be incognito on stage where there was one bit tonight where he took the hood down and he turned around and I thought he was going to turn around and take off the mask but he didn't he, he put the he put the hood back on and came around and I think that's really cool I like that I like that mis mystery sort of daft punk see ya I think the mask's amazing because not only does it add that bit of mystery which could be a little menacing a little dangerous but you do also get that sort of cabaret fun exciting anything could happen feeling from it and the way he dances around the stage like a madman I mean it, 
it, it does it feels much more like more than just a music gig. It feels almost like a show, which is really cool. I don't want my rock stars to be like people you see walking down the street. I want I want to be impressed. I want to be entertained. That's why when bands like Oasis and stuff came along, they looked like they just walked off a, a building site and like go back to glam metal and you know pomp of pop music and the eighties. But I love the eighties and there's a bit of that going on and that's fantastic. And they dress up and there's a whole, you know, audience participation part to it as well, which I love. You know, the band just brings you into their world and you're allowed to enjoy it and just go on and dance away. Because you can't help but be drawn in by it. It's so magnetic. It's like you hear it and it draws you in. We all flow according to the whim of the great magnet. And the great magnet is the music. They are, um, it's a there's a community thing to it, a kind of belonging and... And it's just cool as well, you know. It's it's just a wonderful thing to be part of. I feel privileged actually, like it's great. Nice to have a big group of people together and just knowing that you've got this like lovely community together, it's nice. There's people now that I know I'll see at Mickey Nine gigs, yeah. which is cool, you know. I don't, don't see them anywhere else, but you know they're gonna yeah. be there and you have a chat and have a beer. On dark nights in northern cities, where crowds gather underground, not knowing why the atmosphere is tense and bereft of oxygen, the shamanic singer and his totemic band of intergalactic beat drifters appear and are gone, leaving behind them only a post-orgasmic sense of calm and hazy pleasure. Did that really happen? Did a masked shaman really leap from an afro of bass, forcing even white people to dance to his every word and sway? They convert many who encounter them to their raving ways. The converted know there is a better kind of music out there, one of ecstatic rhythms and primal groove. There is no longer any need for chords and choruses. There is only need for love songs or sad songs, for this music transcends earthly emotion. The followers of the masked shaman know the way to the future. The followers are growing. <laughs> some kind of Stalin-esque, you know, mission to, to get people into Mickey Nine. A couple of guys in the team now regularly uh, bash out Mickey Nine's tunes, you know, on the phone when they're coming to work, which uh, is a job well done, I reckon. Makes me feel out of work when I'm in work. I heard the, the CD and it's, uh, it's really good, but the thing is, they're so good live. I mean, like, so fucking amazing live. And if I can get that, Onto a record, then I think, I, that's I, I think that that's <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see them making it getting large um, because the music certainly deserves it. And there's a bunch of guys there, I, I mean, absolutely deserve it. But in a kind of selfish way, I don't because I still want to go to Mickey Nine gigs and just have a few hundred people and be part of them and my own little scene and keep it for me. And But I suppose that's selfish though. I'd, I'd love to see them making it. They, absolutely. If they don't, there's no justice. Yeah. If you listen for it, you will hear everything has a beat to it. You just gotta know.
things that I like. And I like Mickey Nines. To actually see a band that you get on with because you see so much fucking shit. There's so many shit bands out there. <laughs> That, that it's so nice to see a fucking good band, you know what I mean? It's, uh, and um, blew me away, really, really did. Um, and I couldn't believe they weren't signed. I mean, I couldn't believe that they weren't massive and successful. You know what I mean? Like, so, uh, like us, <laughs> probably because they don't have me in the band. But I mean, I, I hope the guys get every success in the world. They deserve it. Um, they are, for me anyway, best band that I've heard in a bit of years. A Scottish and domain. <laughs> Computer inventor, he drank the poison apple. Computer inventor, lover of men, lover of men. Nines. <clears throat> and maybe, just maybe, we're going to get the Mickey Nines to come on, on on the show right now. That would be good, wouldn't it? Uh, apologies for any technical issues there. We hadn't actually planned this, there was no plan for us to host it and then on Sunday then I heard the announcement that it was going to be an, going to be premiered on Sunday and I thought I was happy to host it but I didn't know that I was going to be doing this what a great film uh, shouts to Daryl Coburn and all the team shouts to Sorcha I think she was the best well, let's go to the comments that's the new Corona Fringe uh, when he had we, we had that one So, if you would like to see the Mickey Nines appear on screen, I would like to see the Mickey Nines here. And I'm sure you would as well. I think the Mickey Nines should come on, on the show. Or if there's any Mickey Nine fans that would like to come on the show, this is the link. This is the link. So if there's any Mickey Nine fans who want to talk about the show, that was brilliant. Thanks, says Lou. You're spot on for holding us. Thank you, Eddie. Brilliant, says Angela. Whoa, where was Mark McGee and David Blair? Any of the David Blairs? No idea. That was amazing. Are the band members coming on? We don't know. Don't know. Uh, I've put a link in the comments. I'm just going to make a wee banner in case the one they've not heard it yet. I have invited them on, but it was all it was all it was all kind of made last minute. But this is the link. If you want to join us, it's uh, streamyard.com forward slash B to the three. All those letters uh, down there. So if you want to join us hit that link. I put it in the comments as well so you don't need to type it out. But I'm hoping that one of the Mickey Nines will appear. If not, it'd be good to have Soapy, who was a star of the show. It was nice of the Queen to let him into Buckingham Palace to film his bits. I'd like to speak to Soapy. 
Links me Saucer. Or if there's any Mickey Nines fans or just anyone that had never seen Mickey Nines until tonight, then feel free to click it in. You can actually call that radio. It's a real thing. So, uh, come on on. Loads of comments coming in. I love you, Mark. It says Soapy. Uh, join you. Yeah, come on on. Come on on. Uh, you should just shout out to Killer Whale too. Shout out to Killer Whale. That's Doogie's uh, more kind of stripped down acoustic project. Uh, yeah. Is anyone, is anyone going to click the link? Well, while we're waiting on that, while we're waiting on the Mickey Nines actually appearing on the show, I'd just like to thank tonight's guest, Leila Josephine. We're here every night. At seven o'clock tomorrow, we've got Sound Thief, followed by the Your or a Vision after party. Tuesday, we've got Doghouse. Wednesday, we've got a poetry slam to find out who the best poet of the year in the world is right now. And then Thursday, we've got Kitty Got Claws from London. This is you call that radio. We hear it every day at seven o'clock. Shout out to the patrons for supporting the show. Oh, is that our first caller? Oh, it's our first caller. We'll be back in a little minute. Uh, I'm going to do a wee round of applause while we, we sort out. Is that the Mickey Nines? We may have the Mickey Nines live on here. Let's just find out. But let's just have a round of applause. Everyone, I don't care where you are. I know we, we clap for the NHS on a Thursday, but let's clap for uh, Daryl Coburn, all his team, Sasha, Soapy, uh, everyone who was on the video and uh, the Mickey Nines. You call that radio. Um, Party fucking radio. Here to tell the people that we hear you. One guy will not allow. You call that radio. I hope you want to see it. You call that radio. <laughs> Call that radio. <laughs> I you want to say it, that's kind of part of the fun. Powered by our patrons. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, and we are powered by our patrons. We're here every night at seven o'clock, and we wouldn't be, whether it not for the mighty patrons. So if you can afford two pounds, three pounds a month or more, if you can afford that, then you can sign up at patreon.com forward slash you call that radio. There's also a PayPal if you want to just make a one-off donation. Every little helps. We've got our first caller. Is oh, it's, it's the main man himself. I'll bring you in the bigger screen. Soapy, how are you doing, mate? Uh, I can't, I can't hear. Oh, hold on. Uh, you're, you're, you've got no volume, mate. Soapy. I can't hear any volume from you. You might recognise Soapy earlier on from being at the Bug Buckingham ha Palace uh, fire earlier on. He had a fire behind him. He had uh, library books behind him. But for some reason, I can't actually hear what he's got to say, annoyingly. Uh, I think you've muted. Soapy, you've muted yourself. Your mic's not connected, I'm afraid. So let's go to the comments while you figure out how to unmute your microphone. We have uh, Moan the Soap, says Eddie McCurry. Uh, Lou Rogerson says, I'm a proud patron, but I'll never call. Lou, you don't need to call. Being a patron is enough. Shouts to all the Mince and Tatties crew. We're up to 121 supporters, and I really do appreciate it. Uh, Soapy's gone. He'll be back in a minute. Um, we got Mickey Nine's probably one of the best bands to come out of Scotland in a very long time. I would agree with that. A live band, they're a live band, they're also quite mystical, aren't they? They're quite 
you know, you, the, you never heard them talk on the documentary. They haven't turned up for the after party yet. But if any Mickey Nines people are watching out here, there is a link in the comments that you can click because you can actually call that radio. Uh, unmute your muted mic icon, Soapy, for fuck's sake, you're spoiling our evening. We've got, uh, yeah, Soapy, you have it muted. Soapy, you have your microphone on mute. Eddie says, Mickey Nines, one of the best bands to come out of the UK in a long time. So as you can see, it's just in the last moment, last few minutes has went from the best band in Scotland to the best band in the UK. And that's just within a minute. That's how good the Mickey Nines are. I reckon probably within another minute, someone will be commenting saying they might be the best band in the world and then the universe and so on. I uh, still love a Gyro's gig though. Gyro Babies are another good band, but it's not all about them. Uh, it won't turn off, says Soapy. Uh, great hosting, says Angela. Thank you very much, Angela. Apologies for for the, the, the issues, though. It was just... We tried to do too much tonight. We're here every night for about two or three hours a night, and then on that's just no hand on it. Uh, could you play some Mickey Nines in the background? Yes, we can. We could have a Mickey Nines song while we try and... Uh, Gary would be Fabio on the storm on the show. Yeah, get uh, Gary also says get Griggsy on to talk about maskophobia. Yeah, interestingly, Griggsy's got a problem. She's scared of masks, a phobia of masks, which is why she can't really. She's not really into the the Mickey Nines. Um, you're doing brilliant, Mark. We still give you a clap. Well, feel free. Uh, Lou Rogers says I've had a Gyro Babies day today. Nice one. Uh, aye. And I've uh, just had my Dutch cousin to say it's the best thing to come out of the EU. I'm assuming that's the Mickey Nines, or is that you call that radio? I'm not really sure. You call that radio? <laughs> Okay, so what would you like? I think we're just going to end the show. What would you like? What song should we end it with? She's in it, Mickey Nines, just dances facing away from the band. Uh, got to be one of the best double bills, Gyro Babies and Mickey Nines at the garage last year. It was a, it was a, that was a night. That was a night. Okay, I don't, I don't think the Mickey Nines are turning up here. Uh, let me just let me just check. Okay, cool. We'll do it. We'll do a Mickey Nine special one night, and we'll maybe watch the documentary again together from start to finish. And yeah, let's do that. We'll do a we'll do a special night where the Mickey Nines are actually here. Cut, that's coming very soon. I'm going to put on. We'll end with a a soppy one because they've got the funk. I've got those loud live tunes, but I think the way that I'm feeling the day is end it on a, a song called Planet, which is quite good because there's obviously loads of music videos that are going to come out in the next few days that look exactly like this video because it's just different people singing along to a song from different area, areas in the world. So they were they were ahead of the game. When it comes to that. So let's do that. A planet. Share audio. Uh, any last comments before we do this? Uh, we've got... Uh, John Taylor says, can't really get into the recorded stuff, but enjoy the documentary. Sounds like I need to see the live to really get what's going on. Absolutely, John. I mean, you do. You really do. It's not a... Uh, I mean, they've got some good recorded tunes. I think this song, for example, is a great recorded tune. But it's not really, it doesn't really fairly encapsulate what the Mickey Nines are about. You need to go to a live show. They are one of the best live bands on the planet. Um, Kev Pearson's watching, is he? All right, all right, how you doing, mate? I hope you're, hope you're doing your DIY to an acceptable standard. Uh, you're amazing. 
Definitely one of the best live bands, best bands I've ever seen. Uh, Lou Rodgson, best night of my life was at the garage last night. Fucking amazing night. It was a good one. It was a good one. Uh, Colin Mustard Gyro's Mickey Nines at Stereo. I don't know if that's happened before or it's going to happen. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Imagine the stereo was open and we could just all go there together right now. Imagine we could do that and we could all just sing. We could just sing songs together and party. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe soon. Maybe soon. Uh, we're going to have one big massive party when this is all over. I can guarantee you that. Thanks to my guest tonight, Lila Josephine. Thanks to the Mickey Nines for letting us host their, uh, their, uh, their, their premiere. And we'll get them on the show for the next time. Let's uh, see you tomorrow night. We'll be back here at 7 o'clock. We're here every night at 7 o'clock. Shout out to the patrons as always. And um, let's, let's go for Planet. In a minute. In a minute, because I think that is the call going. Could it be a last minute Mickey Nine appeared? Cat Jones, I missed the documentary. Who can I view this now? I think you could probably rewind. Please finish with a gyro song. Uh, the the Mickey Nines album launch, it happened, all right. So, Gyro's, Colin Mustard and Mickey Nines did play a gig together. Sounds like a good night. Uh, yeah, you should be able to just rewind this and watch it back. I would also imagine that now that it's been, that it's been premiered, that there'll be an opportunity for everyone to watch it at the same time together. So, either just rewind it back. This video will be on YouTube. Uh, Twitch. I'll show you, actually. Twitch, 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 Twitch. This, go here. We we'll watch you back on twitch.tv forward slash you call that radio on a wee minute. And I'm sure the Mickey Nines will share it on their page tomorrow and stuff like that as well. Uh, any final words from anyone? Nah, cool. I think what we should do then is finish with a Mickey Nines track, plan it. And once again, thank Lila Josephine and all our guests for the last four weeks. We've been doing this every day now for about a month. We're going into week four and I've not even made the highlight reel for week three because things have been so busy. So hopefully we'll have a week three and a week four highlight reel out in the next day or two. It's a really busy week ahead. Some more comments to read out before we finish. Uh, thank you for the good live stream. Uh -huh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, ramp up the theatre. Yeah, I'm not going to finish with a, a, a gyro's tune. I'm going to finish with a Mickey Nine's tune. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who's tuned in tonight. Call that radio. <laughs> the Mickey Nines, here it comes.
I'm on a planet with you. The sun sinking into the other earth And to discover The sea was giving birth In every space between the stars There is more space between the stars It just depends on where you are And which direction Or planet oceans turn I love seeing the moon, it makes me feel like I'm on a planet with you. I love seeing the moon, it makes me feel like I'm on a planet with you. I love seeing the moon, it makes me feel like I'm on a planet with you. The Mackie Nains. Strange mood of our time. You call that radio. Makes coherent sense. Makes coherent sense every night, seven o'clock. <laughs> 